All right, welcome back. Scott, Nathan, seven levels of intimacy. That's why we're matching, because, you know, we're reaching we're the ulti ultimate, <laughs> ultimate, you know, relationship between guys is when they start dressing similar. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Um, but we are getting closer to the end. And chapter 14 is 10 reasons people do not have a great relationship. Mm. Literally, he lists them one by one. So if you're listening or if you even want to take notes, I actually think it's it's great to, to see. Um, so I think that we will just jump in to the 10 reasons. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. All under the context of formulating a plan. And this is... Yes. Right? This is designed so that you know some of the things that, that you need to, to think about, what you need to do, how you can make a plan to have a great relationship. So it, we'll, we'll get to that though by the end. So, number one, they don't establish a common purpose. So? Which is becoming the best version of yourself and them becoming the best version of themselves. And in relationship, I am committed to helping Scott become the best version of himself. And he is committed to do the same for me. So it is giving and receiving, just as we, we spoke in the last video, right? That's right. So that's number one. But now, again, these first 10, yeah. as he lists them, are 10 reasons couples don't Yes. Become the best version. Which mean, and we'll just start off, but so we'll use this as an example. Meaning, oftentimes when people get together, they don't really have a foundation for their relationship. They just think, I like this person, they like me, and we'll just make it work. There's no other sense of why are we together. Of higher calling. Yeah, of higher calling, of purpose of itself. Purpose. What is the purpose of this relationship? I mean, at the end of the day, you will find many relationships is, well, I, I enjoy it and I, I get pleasure from it, maybe emotionally, physically, whatever, uh, which we all know that is a very temporary thing. I mean, right. it goes up and down yeah, yeah. And, and, they, and, and they don't ever talk about it either. That's right. So they don't have a common purpose. Right. All right. Reason number two. Do you have this one? They don't define what makes a great relationship. Right. So, you know, each of us definitely from our past has things that we value higher than other things. Mm. You know, there can be a lot of great values, but sometimes when I, when I talk to people, I, I will say, you know, go ahead and define what your deal breakers are. You know, your deal breakers might be like, I. I love punctuality. It tells me that you care if you're punctual. And if the other person is constantly late, they're going to interpret that yeah, badly. Absolutely. You know, and all it would take is for you to actually say that to each other so that you know the why behind the value too. That's right. Right. So even though it's something so simple like punctuality, I'm using one that, that might seem like a lesser value and yet it could have a profound effect on the, on the relationship itself. That's right. So, so he basically does say, go ahead and define what makes a great relationship to you. So I've heard people say laughter. Laughter needs to be a relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, years down the road, you could say, you know what? We have not laughed together. I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. It's it's time to work on that again. Yeah. Because then you know that your relationship is probably going through, you know, a little bit of a tied out moment where, where you need to work and be intentional about it, you know? So we need to commit to becoming the best version of ourselves, and we also need to define what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number three, they make it a moving target. And he goes ahead and says, mm -hmm. relationships can be driven by whims, cravings, ego, self-centered interests, um, basically however you're feeling that day. You know, you're if you're feeling badly, then maybe you feel like your relationship is bad, going bad. That's right. And so it, it's it's never it's never anchored in anything. It ties back into what we talked about in the last chapter. Are we committed to each other's needs, or are we more committed to each other's wants? Yeah. He does go ahead and say it's. Uh, he talks about circumstances. 
making it kind of circumstantial algorithm. Um, okay, number four. They make it seem impossible. So in other words, they may have unrealistic expectations of their partner. They may, they may feel like this person, my spouse, should be perfect. Probably wouldn't say that, but yeah. maybe act yeah. in that way. You didn't do this, you, you're not that, where are you, right? Um, and sometimes those are legitimate, but sometimes there can be unrealistic expectations yeah. that we need to be aware of. I think in our microwave society, I think this is a big one because in my head, you know, let's face it, when you first meet someone, they're perfect. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. Rose-colored glasses. Absolutely. That's right. I mean, it, whether you're you're getting married or not, they, they call it the honeymoon phase, yes. where all you see is good things. Yes. You know, but give it long enough, and you will start to see that they're not perfect. That you are married to another human being. That you're married to another broken human being. And you're not married to Jesus. That's right. And and so they he he goes to say, you know, you may see these things and you feel frustrated, but actually your frustration is just misguided expectations. And you have made yourself frustrated. Um, I think it's good to know because you can read that and think, or, or, or a circumstance could happen and you just let your frustration get out of control rather than thinking, you know, I, I, need, to, I need to talk this through so we can come to some kind of understanding how, how we're moving forward together too. It reminds me of what Jesus said to the Pharisees, the religious leaders of his day, he, he got on them, he was hard on them, and he said, before you judge another person, take the plank out yeah. of your own eye, and then you'll see enough to take the splinter yeah. out of your own. And it, I think that's such an amazing principle to live by. If we can realize I'm also a fallen human being, yeah. that gives us a framework relate to yeah. another fall of the You know, I think that's why this goes, I mean, they all kind of tie into each other, mm -hmm. but that's why this ties so much into the helping each other become the best version of yourself. Because then you could say, okay, I'm frustrated, but this person is growing. We're growing together. Let's help each other understand this. You know, whether it's, it's a habit that they do with Maybe the toilet paper is over or under, yeah. right? <laughs> um, I'll give you another example. You know, my, my wife, when we first got married, she always left the cabinet doors open. And bless her, I, I always hit my head. It was painful, actually, <laughs> for me. <laughs> so, so I just said, please, you know, if you want to keep me safe, Please start closing the cabinet doors. If you want me to become the best version of myself <laughs> and from cutting my head. Right, right. Maybe and you had hair. With them. Maybe know. that's why, uh, you know, we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that That's probably more the doorways and the ceilings that I hit. But, but, you know, these things are, it takes communication. And all of these are communication points. Yes. So let's just keep going, though. Yes. Right? Five. They don't believe that there can be a great relationship. They don't believe. Let's face it. There are so many divorces today, you know, whether it's, um, I have some family members who got divorced like six months after they were married. I thought, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and then you have people who are, who are like 30 years into marriage and they get divorced too. Mm -hmm. And it's given younger people a sense that maybe marriage is not possible, right? Or it's not marriages that, like you said, if you go into it and say, well, most marriages end in divorce anyway, that doesn't sound like it would fit with, I'm committed to helping you become the best version of yourself. Right, right. And so a lot of that, that mindset is so prevalent today because they, it's kind of like, well, I, I don't want to go through that grief. So maybe it's not worth it. Maybe a great relationship is not worth it either. So they don't actually believe that great relationships are possible. He does say people will now, now think that, um, well, this is, that's a different one. Yeah. I don't want to go into the other one, but uh, you have to create a vision. You have to look for, for, for how great relationships are possible because it does take hard work. Yeah. He's very much saying a great relationship is hard work, but they are worth it. Yeah. So, so then the next one, uh, similarly, yeah. right. These, like you said, they all kind of go 
hand in hand. Yeah. They never make having a great relationship a <coughs> must. Kind yeah. of view it as those who have a great relationship kind of got lucky. They got lucky. And this goes to say, now this isn't just marriage. This is just a great relationship in general. And his view is a great relationship is the ultimate way that we become the best version of ourselves. That's a right. great relationship That's does important. help us thrive because of a, it helps it helps us fill, fill our legitimate needs, but it also challenges us to grow into the, I mean, think of all the things that come out of great relationships, the kind of, um, the kind of dialogue, the kind of the, the, well, I don't want to go into the other reasons, but they, they do push us to, to grow into our better selves. That's right. So, yeah. Okay, number seven, they don't follow through. Um, he goes to say, we attend to other things of relative insignificance and ignore the plan we made that would help us create a great relationship. Meaning, let's face it, hard things are hard to commit to and hard to keep doing. And so sometimes we just do stuff that, that, are, that doesn't matter as much because yeah. they're just, it's just easier. Right. You know? If you were doing a one tough modern race with a partner yeah other other than me because anyway um and that partner that didn't train yeah you would be fully disappointed because you know as a team you would not become the best version of what you could be yeah right it's not a must for them it needs to be a must though yeah it needs to be because we god wants us to grow i mean he cares about our character he cares about who we are becoming Right. Um, much more than usually what we're actually doing. Um, and part of the mm -hmm. growing of character is in relationships. So That's right. Okay, number eight. They have no accountability. No accountability. Now, this one reminded me a lot of Celebrate Recovery. As you know, we try Fine. and yeah. uh, discuss recovery as we work through these books. And that's one of the premises of being involved at CR is that you have either a sponsor, an accountability partner, a friend, somebody yeah. that, <laughs> excuse me, that you're talking to about the goals you're trying to achieve in your life or in that context in your recovery. Really yes. important. He does say this is one of the most difficult aspects of intimacy because it takes a lot of courage, a lot of love too. Um, I think because if you're in a relationship and you never have the foundation of helping each other become the best version of yourself, you don't know necessarily why the person might give you some some feedback or accountability on something because you might just, tr you, then, you know, what's the usual? Well, they're just bothered by it. Maybe they're frustrated with certain habit. Maybe it, you know, maybe it doesn't, it, it doesn't look good. Whatever reason mm -hmm. might come up, we think the person is in for themselves saying this to me. And so it can be hard because if things aren't written down well or communicated well, mm -hmm. and it comes to what we feel like out of nowhere, then then it, it will feel like, you know, you're overstepping your boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's right. The next one, um, they give up in the face of major challenges. Right. Good character is usually formed in the furnace of life's great struggles and challenges. We've already looked at some of the seven levels of intimacy in terms of like fears and failures and faults and, and even hopes and dreams, right? Um, and, and he basically says there's no such thing as a great relationship that doesn't go through tough challenges together. I mean, you can think of, I think of people who have been through hard things together. I think of, now this one, I, th I think of veterans, right? Mm -hmm. Veterans could feel so connected because of what they've been through physically. Right. I mean, they've like, that's like brotherhood. I will always trust the person who, who laid next to me when bullets were flying. Right. Yeah. So, so you, that's solidified. I remember the first time I was talking to someone about my own addiction, you know, this was more than a decade ago. Well, actually, this is like maybe more than 15 years ago now. And, and he was going, he was just getting to that moment where he was facing his addiction. And, mm. and I remember us getting together and, and, and we were really close really fast mm. because, of, uh, because we were going through something hard together, you know? Um, 
I'm going to back up real quick to tie in something from from reason number eight, mm -hmm. accountability. He mm -hmm. he does say it's important to write things down. He does say it's important to write down the purpose, the goals, the dreams, and the plan on how to do this because when you're facing major challenges, you can go back to some of these things that you've committed yourself to. That's right. You can go back and say, okay, but we've, we've really set the direction for our relationship. Oftentimes, if there's nothing to, to ground you or there's no plan, then when the challenge comes about, the circumstance can just feel like, well, maybe it's just easier to give up on this. Yeah, and this there's really a parallel here between Again, if you're familiar, Jesus taught the parable of the four seeds. And it reminds me of yeah. some seeds fall on rocky soil, some seeds fall on hard soil. Yeah. So hard times come along, they get choked out by the weeds of life because they maybe weren't fully committed to yeah. it in the first place. Yeah. But when you push through and you pursue, this is our goal, the best version of each other, then you produce a crop 30 times, 60 times, 100 yeah. times more than you could have ever imagined. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Reason number 10. You have this one? They never get quality coaching. And so he says, why wait until you have a problem? Right. Right. We jump right. in. We should, we should be proactive, which we all know is easier said than done. Yes. I mean, I think of anything that we want to do in life, you know, if you want to pick up the guitar for the first time. Yes, there are some people that kind of pluck along, but what are you going to do? You, you're going to probably watch videos. Yeah. Or you'll just literally go find someone to teach you how to play guitar. You know, whether it's in sports, whether it's in music, art, I, I mean, even, even education, there's always going to be someone who's teaching you. And coaching is, is basically to say, you know, if you want a great relationship, why not get coaching? I, 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 I think of the most often one would be like premarital counseling. Yeah. You get premarital counseling because you want to be prepared for after the honeymoon, right? <laughs> um, Plus we would require it. That, that too. <laughs> but there's, but, but there's, there's a reason, reason for that. Right? Because yeah. why, why wait until there's a problem? Why not send couples off well and say, we've at least gotten them started? Because let's face it, most couples wait until things are really, really bad. Um, and in fact, they've waited till it's it's already blown up. That's right. Um, and that's and that's a real. Uh, I think that's a real problem. And and it's um, and it's great to see that we could get coaching to become the best version of ourselves. I, I I think of celebrate recovery. I mean, the lessons are designed to help you become the best version of yourself. That's right. So. And and the lessons are primarily about relationships. Relationship with God, yeah. our Creator, yeah. the one who's given us a purpose. Yeah relationships with each other as well as you might say our relationship with, with ourselves with ourselves yeah. how we view ourselves yeah in yeah. light of who god is in light of who each other is right so he ends the chapter he says in verse these and i'm just going to read them off yeah um because these are basically the 10 things that that you should do to have a great relationship so reason one they establish a common purpose two they clearly define what makes a relationship great for themselves, for each other as well. Mm -hmm. Three, they agree on a plan to establish a great relationship. How are you going to do it? Four, their plan is realistic. Five, they believe they can achieve their goal. Six, they make it an absolute must to be part of a great relationship. Seven, they persevere, they follow through. Eight, they hold each other accountable to their purpose and plan because you've written it down. Mm -hmm. right? Nine, they don't give up in the face of major challenges. Ten, they get quality coaching. Mm. So awesome. there you go. So that would hopefully help you make a plan. And you can hopefully see in the seven levels different things that you can talk through as well, whether it's opinions or hopes and dreams or faults and fears and failures at the appropriate time. Right? Absolutely. Great book, The Seven Levels of Intimacy, Matthew Kelly. We encourage you to pick it up, read it for yourselves, or listen to it. Yep. And... Uh, and also tell your friends about this podcast. Yeah. Uh, love to have them join in on the conversation. Yeah, too. definitely. And of course, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to you. can always come to Celebrate Recovery on Monday night, 7 o'clock, where you can tell us what you're getting out of the book yourself, too. That would be awesome.
right? And that's, we'll see. that's just happened to me recently. Yes, yes. that's right. Very cool. So, all right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. See you later.